recommending to sellers to soft list the property this year. Mm -hmm. Get the photos done, get it ready, have it marketed to the database this yeah. year. So you want to make sure if you're a buyer, you're, you're on that database yeah, and you're one of the, one of the phone calls. Hey guys, welcome back to Property Chat with Lockie and Matt. Obviously powered by Real Hub and Campaign Track. Today, Lockie and I wanted to talk a little bit about the pointy end of the season and, and what that looks like and has looked like over the last couple of years. Obviously, you know, this year might be a little bit different and we're you know, talking trends for buyers, sellers and what to expect with Christmas closures and then you know, early in the new year. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not been a usual year by any means, no. has it? So no. we were sort of thinking as we got into spring that we'd see a bit of a, I guess, a late rush into the end of the year and we've definitely seen that. But in some cases, it's still not dissimilar to most years. November's always traditionally the biggest month of the year within that little bit of a, a trickle on into December of, of properties that sort of couldn't get uh, perhaps ready in time or also the, the people who have bought in November and then want to try and quickly sell in, in December. So mm -hmm. um, whilst it is busier than perhaps usual, it's still pretty traditional to see this kind of market activity, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. I think one of the big things that I see all the time is sellers leaving at that last little rush before December and then not realising which, you know, how, how can they, but not realising that solicitors all shut down over Christmas and that's that's the forced break for real estate agents. You know, it's generally while we're off over that yeah. time. Still a lot of people transacting sales and having longer cooling off periods, but, you know, it is because we have that closure date, which is generally 19th till about sort of 3rd or 4th of Jan from memory. Yeah, and some are closed a lot longer than that mm. too. So you can be talking sort of like 15th of January even yeah. for some of them coming back um, and they'd prefer to get things done beforehand, of course. Yeah. Um, but I guess we get that question a lot at this time of the year as to what do I do now? I'm at that point of the year, I've either been intending to buy or intending to sell, I haven't done it yet, do I do it now? Mm. Or do I wait till the, ne the new year? So I guess, what are you saying to people at the moment when they're asking that question? Yeah, and it is a good question. You know, I, I say to a lot of the sellers that we're dealing with at the moment, I guess it, it is really circumstantial if they're gonna be around and if they're prepared to, you know, maybe wait that little bit of extra time that it's gonna take because we've got the closures. You know, it means that you might not achieve that sale just prior to Christmas, but it could be to the point where there's new buyers entering the market early in January. Um, you know, whether that's gonna be the case this time around, as I was saying to you, you know, before we sort of jumped into this, I feel like since COVID, you know, this will be the first opportunity, this Christmas break for families to sort of, you know, to get together on some form of occasion where, you know, you're allowed to have the numbers, you're allowed to have the, the family interaction. So I think, you know, we might see a little bit of an extended break, but, you know, I think if you're a seller, maybe one of the smarter things to do would be to get your photos, get your contracts, select your agent, do all of the legwork in December if you've left it till about now so that in January, your agent's all ready to go. And maybe even leading up to that time, you know, if the agent's got the database that he says he does, well, there's a great opportunity for him to start marketing that to the database of buyers and, you know, maybe achieve that off-market sale and, and then if not, take it to market and have your campaign in January. Yeah, well, there's always going to be surplus buyers at this time of year and possibly more than any other time period because most parts of the year, you'll have uh, property sell, buyers miss out, and then there'll be new properties coming on that next month, and then those buyers miss out, and there'll, but there'll be new ones. It's that only time period of the year where actually new listings just sort of stop dead mm. to some degree. So there are a lot of buyers that don't have anything to look at. Well, especially like this year has been one of the worst for it, but there has been such a shortage of supply. Mm. You know, like it, you look at some of the rental markets across different parts yeah. of, of New South Wales, you know, like, like where we are on the Central Coast, it's yeah. unbelievable. Vacancy rate at the lowest point it's ever been. And, you know, I don't know about you, but getting hounded by anyone who's looking for a, um, for a rental property or even for something to buy in certain price brackets. Yeah, most definitely. And if it's the right property, if it's not, hasn't had any sort of, I guess, objectionable features, you know, if it just has broad appeal, uh, the demand is incredible. And it's, you know, selling in, you know, within a few days if, you know, you, you let it, whether or not you're sticking to a structured auction campaign is a different story. But if it was private treaty or if you're willing to sell before auction, really a matter of days mm. in some instances. So, you know, you're finding buyers inquiring about properties and missing out before, you know, even the first open home in yeah. some instances. Yeah. So there's just so many people at this time of year that are still keen to buy something. But I think what I have seen in the last little while is buyer fatigue starting to creep in. And that's totally yeah. understandable. You know, you've been looking at properties yeah. since uh, early spring. It's been a, let's be honest, a tough year to begin yeah. with. So everyone's all a little bit tired anyway. And 
you get to this point of the year, you've missed out. You thought it was going to be a good year to buy property, so that's well, that's that one the expectation disappointment. Had changed, hadn't it? You know, yeah. they sort of thought going through COVID, the market's going to soften. I, I know we've had heaps of people enter the market for that very reason, and then that just you know bred social proof. Just totally hasn't hasn't happened, and yeah. it's been the complete opposite. Yeah. So, I think best advice that I could give at this time of year to a buyer is don't tire because there's a lot that will. Mm. And a lot of people go, you know what? We've been looking. We've missed out on properties in November. That's it. We've yeah. got too much stuff happening till the end of the year. We're just gonna put this on hold until early next year. Yeah. But what actually might happen then is if a few or enough buyers do that, those properties you know, that are, have widespread appeal, sure, they might still scream along, but those ones that maybe have one or two things that aren't perfect or that someone you know, is a bit more niche, yeah. They might not have many buyers on them at this time of year, mm. you know, in the next couple of weeks. So somebody Softens that's competition. exactly, you know, one or two buyers on those types of properties that weren't that the ones with broad appeal, yeah. that can make a huge difference if you if they dropped off and decided not to look until next year. Yeah. So m buyers at this point of the year probably have a, a better chance of grabbing something if they stick with it right till the break. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess for, you know, for a lot of the, the vendors and, and buyers that we deal with, you know, num number one question we get asked all the time at this time of year is what we can expect, you know, early next year. Yeah. What, what do we think the first quarter will bring? You know, I've, I've sort of had a look at how the last quarter's gone and, you know, it has been incredible. Yes, shortage of stock, prices have been higher, buyer inquiry's been, you know, as high as it has been for our particular market. And I know that, you know, through multiple markets across different parts of New South Wales, it's been the same sort of story. I don't know if I can really see stock levels picking up next year. I, you know, I don't think that supply and demand is going to change too heavily for the first quarter. Yeah, certainly not. Uh, I'm not getting the indications of that either in mm -hmm. the conversations that I'm having. And, you know, obviously with the auction side of things, talking to a lot of agents throughout Sydney, and they don't have big pipelines, you know, in, in, mm. in reserve waiting until next year. It's not really the case. So we could be looking at a very low stock environment early next year as well. Yeah. And really, whether that will change or not over the, the early part of next year and people start to, you know, get back to normal and we start to see more transacting, that'll be, I guess, interesting to see. I think one of the reasons why we've had the volume that we have had, and it's still been low stock, but we've had a reasonable mm. increase in volume, is that pent up frustration from earlier in the year from people who would have sold earlier. So yeah. if you take that out of the equation and consider this period, this spring period to have been perhaps let's say even 30% more stock because of Residual. the- Residual. Yeah. yeah. If that 30% is gone in what was already a low stock environment and next year we're looking at that sort of situation, that's going to be quite tight in terms of the number of properties available. So. Yeah. I don't think it's going to improve for buyers. No, and you pair that with the, like the, the big thing that we see every single new year is everyone has that resolution to do something property yeah. wise. And it's, you know, it is, we want to be in before the school term starts. We want yeah. to be, you know, in and settled before sort of February or after Australia Day, just so that you then see out the new year in your new suburb, your new home, whatever that might be. Mm. And then you start to feel that, you know, that little bit rooted, a little bit settled on, on what you've bought. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think really, you know, if, if you sum it up for, for buyers, stick with it till the end of the year. There's yep. still probably good opportunity. Yep. It'll be few and far between, of course, yep. but they're out there. And I guess having those conversations with agents, because like we've just said, you know, both yourself and myself, we're recommending to, and most agents would be, recommending to sellers to soft list the property this year. Mm. Get the photos done, get it ready, have it marketed to the database this yep. year. So you want to make sure if you're a buyer, you're, you're on that database yeah, and you're one of the, one of the phone calls. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Um, so. That's incredibly important. And it'll give you the heads up, even if uh, you know, they're properties that don't come to market this year or they don't end up panning out, they're probably going to come on in the early part of next year. Yeah. So you'll at least get that sort of inside run at yeah. them. But the buyers who have got buyers fatigue, like my advice to all of those buyers is to get more specific. You know, I think the reason you get fatigue is because you're looking at, sometimes I see it, is a, such a broad range of property and they've got this price range and this price range, but then it's townhouse, house, apartment, unit, villa, whatever, but it just has to be within a price and then it's this suburb and this suburb. It, it's almost impossible to track and you kind of end up one foot in, one foot in, and you know, you never fully commit to one particular yeah. price range. So, yeah. you know, I think now's a good time for those buyers to take a little bit of time off and reflect over Christmas. Okay, what did I see this year? What were the trends? You know, maybe if it didn't work out, 
ring the agent when you're on the property that you'd made an offer on and didn't get. Get some advice. What could you have done different? Was there maybe a better strategy or a better offer or was you just simply were priced out? But I think it's a really good time to start renewing your buying strategy. Yeah, that's really, really good advice. I think from a vendor perspective, like from someone who's thinking to sell, obviously we get that question at this time of the year, do we do it now, do we do it in the new year? And funnily enough, um, which always surprises me because being in the industry, I assume that um, you know, and shouldn't do that, but assume that people understand that that period over Christmas is very quiet. Mm. But a lot of people seem to think that that is actually quite a busy time because especially on the coast or lifestyle yeah, areas, yeah. it's packed, there's people everywhere. Especially so think, this year. Yeah. You've and got schoolies here early at the yeah. moment, plus you've also got all the people here in their holiday homes and everyone coming out for holidays. It's gonna be mental. Yeah. But I think what's important to remember is that these are people on holidays, they're not really in buying mode. Yeah. And for the small percentage of people that might possibly consider buying what you're running the risk of is if your property if you put your property on now and leave it on all over christmas buyers will then attach that days on market to the price and they perceive it as being worth less because it's been on the market longer yeah. so you really would be banking on that one in a million holiday buyer who's got the cash who just is able to make an impulse purchase on holidays i mean you know i can tell you so seven years of working in terrigal this year and I remember the first two or three years, I'd get all those phone calls from people saying, I'm up from Sydney for the day, um, I need you to show me through these five or six properties and I'd ring all my vendors and you'd be so excited and you'd tell up all these inspections and it would be an absolute waste of time. There'd be 10 to 15 buyers. And it's not always the case, but I can tell you this, I've done my fair share of holiday inspections and there wouldn't be a hand yeah, of like, buyers from it. These are people that are, you know, probably end up buying, but that's the very early stages of their, yeah. their um, inquiry. And whilst that's great and we're always happy to show them properties, you don't want your home to be the one that they look at nine months the before cabins. they decide. Yeah, yeah. and they, they don't buy it. Yeah. They just use it to have a look and go, yeah, we could do this in a year or so. This, yeah. this could work for us. But meanwhile, you've got your property on the market over Christmas and then the buyers that come in in the new year, yeah. they're going, oh, well, that's been on since last year. It's just not a not a great look and perhaps not worth it. So I guess back to that initial advice we were saying, yeah. soft list the property, yeah. select the agent, get it ready and have it available to database buyers and then be ready to beat the market to a launch early next year because once everyone's still floundering around after Christmas, getting their property prepared, trying Taking to order, yeah, trying to order trade, yeah. like organise trades in the um, school holiday period, yeah. like honestly, good luck. Yeah. Um, Especially if the surf's good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you're ready and you can hit the button, done, yeah. early January, you're gonna beat a lot of people to the punch yeah. as a seller and there'll be buyers in that period that are much more serious than over the Christmas break. Yeah, and they've had the break to be able to get serious. And last thing, if you are a seller and you're on the market currently and you know Christmas is fast approaching and you're starting to get that feeling of uncertainty, do we take it off the market? Do we give it a spell? Or do we stick with it? Do we reduce the price? Do we just hold out till next year? What would your advice be? Well, I think if you're already on the market, it's a different story because you've already committed money to a marketing campaign and you're online on the websites. Now, if you take the property down, you have to pay again to be re-featured. So that's, that's, a, that's a, a cost that's worth considering. It's quite expensive, yeah, of course. Yeah, between three and 10,000, depending on where you are. I exactly right. Yeah, yeah the, the reality is if your property's been on the market already in this period, there's a lot of buyers as we, as we know. So there's probably mm. some adjustments that you might need to make to your campaign in order to get it sold. So what's going to be a better thing to do for vendors in that situation is maybe look at tweaking the existing marketing, look mm. at maybe tweaking your strategy if you're private yeah. treaty, maybe you sort of try auction in the new year. Just let it sit throughout the course of the Christmas period. You're not going to do it much harm. You've already been on the market. Mm. But come back with a plan and a, and a strong campaign, like first week of January, yeah. ready to go. Yeah. Um, but that being said, in order to try and attract interest over that period, if you shake up the marketing, maybe change your photography, invest a little bit in something different like that. Yeah. Um, like if you've got daytime shoots, maybe do some dust shots, something yeah, like, like that to yeah, change it up. But over um, the break, even if, you, you know, if you'd been on the market four to six weeks, you'd have had a lot of feedback, exactly. a lot of feedback. And uh, you know, generally, as we say to every single client that we work with, is that you know, the feedback that you get from the market, for, the marketplace is exactly what we need to be able to pass on to the vendor to say, well, this is why we either are or aren't selling, mm. or this is where price needs to be, or this is what's wrong with the home that maybe stop someone actually wanting to make a move on it. So if there are things that you can rectify, if it's, you know, colour of walls or the, you know, open plans of the lounge room, those sorts yeah. of things, you can do bits and pieces in that time off to, you know, finish off what you need to to get it back to market and yeah, give it that new exactly. feeling. Yeah. Yeah.
Thanks again, guys, for tuning in. As always, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest property chat.